you know, people who are listening who are particularly astute might recall, um, I've referenced a number of Cahill's uh, papers, but one of the more interesting studies he did, which it's possible he did while you were even a student there, was uh, the 40-day starvation study. Um, now, you might have not been quite at Harvard yet because this was, if I recall, in the mid-60s, maybe 66, 67, where, and it was probably a group of medical students that actually volunteered, if not medical students, undergrads, and they, they, they did a water-only fast for 40 days. And the study basically just followed all of the metabolites, uh, what happened to glucose levels, obviously insulin, beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetoacetate. Anyway, it was very fascinating stuff. One of the things that was most interesting to me in that study was even under a period of such extreme starvation, the brain never gave up its dependency on glucose. So even though ketone bodies began to um, service the brain by about day seven to 10 as the majority of the fuel, even at three and four weeks of starvation, glucose was, if my memory serves me correctly, still providing about a third of the brain's energy. Your memory is very good. The brain did switch over to ketone metabolism. And believe it or not, I didn't do the 40-day fast, but I was one of the people who fasted for five to seven days. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if you fasted for uh, three days, uh, you could get paid $50. Mm. And I thought I was the richest guy in the world uh, from this study. 